Prime Minister of St. Martin speaks at the Lions Club Board of Directors installation ceremony. Head of the Culture Department gives brief history of St. Martin's Emancipation Day. But first up, Minister of VSR gives presentation on the preparedness for the reopening of St. Martin. Those are the headlines for Tuesday, June the 30th, 2020. This is SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, the House of Parliament sat in an urgent plenary public session today, Tuesday, to discuss the Ministry of VSR's guidelines for the reopening the destination to international travelers. The public meeting, which was postponed on Monday, June 29, 2020, was held in a virtual setting. The Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor was in attendance. Among the agenda points that were discussed included discussion on the Ministry of VSR's guidelines for reopening the destination to international travelers and the measures taken to mitigate the coronavirus COVID-19. The Minister gave a presentation of the preparedness for the opening of St. Martin. This morning, Mr. Press, um, Chairman, I would like to give a presentation of the preparedness that has been taking place um, for reopening of St. Martin. As you can see, and the, the presentation is being shown now, the travel entry requirements. One of the requirements is the thermal screening and temperature checks by the St. Martin Airport Health Authorities. This will be done um, in two different ways. One is with the handheld and entering of the facility, and then they have a machine that also will do that. If travelers have a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or higher, and or symptoms of coughing, running nose, or difficulty breathing, they shall be treated as possible probable COVID-19 case and shall follow the national protocols indicated in the strategy for the symptomatic person, which include PCR testing and quarantine isolation methods. That is when um, the travelers are coming in, they are in line while they ha um, have either symptoms um, being high temperature of any of the above mentioned, they will be taken out of in the line and there will be a special room where the um, substantial testing will continue and information gathering. Traveler must have a mask in their possession for the use upon disembarkation, which must be worn in all crowded public areas throughout the duration of the stay in St. Martin. The airport will be a mandatory mask usage. Persons are required to take the PCR test before traveling and must show valid result no less than 72 hours. Children below 10 years of age are exempted from testing. Travelers must complete a health declaration form online at www.stmartinentry.com before entering St. Martin. This form includes a disclaimer that ensures that the traveler gives consent be tested upon arrival if necessary, adhere to the island's national testing re quarantine requirements, and cover their own medical expenses if they test positive. Uh, um, example of the, the www.martinentry.com will um, follow. If person does not have COVID pass or negative test result, not older than 72 hours, they will not be able to board a flight nor enter the country. This is for everybody that comes from the high risk um, globe, uh, geographical area. Travelers exhibiting symptoms on arriving without negative test results will be tested at the airport. Travelers will be sent to their hotel, villa, home, or at a government authorized quarantine facility until the PCR results return. 
PCR results can be ready within two to three hours. And this just in, we have just been informed of the decision taken by the Council of Ministers earlier today to postpone the restart of all commercial flights from and to the USA for two weeks as a result of the escalating increase in COVID-19 cases in the USA since last Friday. The decision was taken in the interest of the safety of St. Martin residents, given the island's limited medical resources, as well as the risk of having our borders closed to the French side. An official release from the minister's office on this matter will follow. And they said that they appreciate all efforts to date in preparing the airport for reopening, and they will keep you abreast of any further developments. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for the National Alliance, the Honorable George Pontiflet, when asked about the opening of flights to St. Martin, said that there is a lot of concern, but what do we do? We are stuck right now between a rock and a hard place. However, we have to be cautious of what we put in place. To date, unfortunately, because of our situation, uh, financial-wise, we are forced to open, hopefully July the 1st, in order to allow flights to come into St. Martin. There's a lot of concern as to the issue of COVID because yes, it can be imported, yes, it can be, but what do we do? We have a choice between um, not opening and not getting any US dollars to come in because fact is, we buy, and I think I said it before on, 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 on this station, we have three things that are important for us, food, fuel, and medication. And to buy that, you need U.S. dollars. And if they're not bringing in U.S. dollars into the country, if the Dutch has not given us any funds to put in the central bank which you can use to purchase these, these items, then we must, in order to assist the people of St. Martin, open up our borders and allow these people to come in. And, and let me say this to you. They are waiting. They are knocking down the doors to come to St. Martin. I can tell you that based on facts, not based on hearsay. But what we are doing, what the minister, I believe Mr. Mr. Minister De Vivo was explaining this, we have to be cautious as to what we put in place. But we cannot tell ourselves we're going to remain locked down. They can't come because we have people to feed. And once people are hungry, we don't know what they might do. So. And in other news at this time, head of the culture department on St. Martin, Ms. Clara Reyes, while speaking to our news department on the history of slavery and Emancipation Day, says that it differs vastly from the rest of the Dutch Caribbean islands. She gave a small history of the emancipation story. St. Martin emancipation story differs vastly from the rest of the Dutch Caribbean islands in that being an island nation under two colonial rules, mm -hmm. you had 1848, May 27, the declaration of abolishment of slavery in the, in the French Republic. And then you have 1860, the Dutch, Kingdom. However, 1848, actually from 1833, when the British declared independence, this Caribbean island of ours called Suisse Martin land and the neighboring island was a hotbed of unrest, rebellion, escapes, runaways. I mean, St. Martiners were very proactive and engaged in the liberation story. So now, St. Martin 1848 has a big role to play on St. Martin 1863 in that by, eight, by May 27th, when Emancipation Day was declared in the French colonies, by May 29th, half of St. Martin and slave community was crossing borders to the point that by, I think on May 29th, there's a letter in the archives where you have the Dutch representatives begging or demanding of the French counterparts to please return our property. And the French saying, no, once someone crossed the border, they're in fact free. Then now by June 1st, 1848, there's a letter coming from the Dutch uh, community here, like the, 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 the masters, begging the queen to please release the St. Martin enslaved community because they're not working. And a, so a process for bail was signed, right? Which in fact, what ended up happening is, and, and, and all the documents I've read subsequent, they refer to the St. Martin enslaved community as workers. 
So while it is official, 1863, the Dutch kingdom abolished slavery in St. Martin, and 64,000 enslaved was the name of the amount of people. That's why last year the theme was called 64,000, we have a name. Because we always say the slave, the slave, the slave. And for me, that's just too abstract. It doesn't give you the, the humanity factor. So by 1863, quite a few people were, given their, were either bought their freedom, given their freedom, but more than that, the St. Martin enslaved community almost by virtue of walking away, running away, however, literally, how you say, forced the hand of the, the Dutch enterprise to start paying the enslaved community. So for me, 1848 is really tied. So our emancipation should be actually celebrated from 1848 right to a, uh, May 27th until July 1st, because they are so intertwined. And still to come, Minister of Romy reminds residents to take note of the 2020 hurricane cleanup schedule. We'll have the details to that and much more when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. And as we continue now with more news for you at this time, Minister of Romi, the Honorable Ekba Doran, is reminding residents to take note of the 2020 hurricane cleanup schedule and to use the opportunity to get rid of any debris in and around your home. I advise everyone to take note of the 2020 hurricane cleanup schedule and the flyer which, will be published in the, which was published in the newspaper yesterday actually and will also be published again in the weeks to come. Please use this opportunity to get rid of any debris surrounding your home. Once again, I'm urging everyone to take the necessary precautions in the event that we are faced with a calamity. The government is doing everything within its power to secure the life and property, but you're also encouraged not to sit back, but to help by doing your part and secure your own well-being and that of your loved ones that are around you. Leo Ria Baharani, incoming president of the Leo Alpha Club, and Leo Nichelle Smith Abreu, incoming president of the Leo Omega Club, speaking at their installation ceremony, told the gathering of their planned projects for their term 2020 to 2021. It's a pleasure to welcome you this evening for all three clubs, the Lions, Alpha Leo Club, and Omega Leo Club, have come together for this special event. Let me first start by introducing myself. My name Thank you. 
determined to design and execute other innovative projects with my fellow leaders. I assure you, no project is too small. Reading books to children, for instance, can make a huge difference in their lives, or even playing board games with them in classrooms. I'd also like to mention Lion and Sandra, who I believe is not present here today, who has helped us all immensely over the years. So I am Jennifer, I, along with the rest of the Alpha Leo Club, look forward to working with you as you continue to do great things for the community. I would also like to congratulate President Leo Sato for a very successful year this year, one that was defined by many productive projects. With that, my fellow Leos, I am ready to lead us all in making a difference in our community of Spartan. We will plan impactful projects, we will execute them, and I assure you, we will touch the lives of those who need it most. I was first approached by the then Leo team and then Alphonse to join the Leo Club. At first, I was a bit apprehensive due to the fact I am naturally uh, an introvert. However, they, as well as my husband, um, saw great potential within me and I was a big, a big asset to the club. After being inducted as a new member, I decided to take on a challenge as a new secretary. And I was lucky to serve under the new president that team, who not only displayed the organism, but her will to adapt and ensure that even COVID-19 couldn't knock her down. So because I am ambitious, And still at the Lions Installation uh, Board dinner, the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Martin, Ms. Sylvia Jacobs, also spoke at the Lions Board of Directors Installation Ceremony on Saturday last. The Prime Minister said that she saw the club and thought it was an exclusive club and wondered what it would be like. She also said that she is super proud, though, to have personally worked with some of them. I used to see this club. I saw different friends of mine, I saw different families, and I thought it was an exclusive club. And I grew up, and then I saw other friends of mine in there. Um, and I always wondered what it would be like. And I've always been a very social minded, a community minded person myself, doing little things with foundations and we, our paths would meet, and we would do different things collaboratively throughout my life. But I must say, I'm super proud to have personally worked with your outgoing president, Ernie Boyer, in the education field, that I've played baseball with your incoming president. <laughs> We're all about the same age group, I believe, and so it's interesting for me to see my generation across the sectors of St. Martin's community, and service is the most noblest of things you can do for your country. Volunteerism and giving of yourself when you have, it can never be repaid. And so as I watch these young ones, my daughter was also a Leo, I must say, and it builds character, it builds community, it builds a commitment to being a part of the solution and not just a bystander complaining. And so I'm very, very proud to look around this room and see so many young people, so many 
people who have gone away, study, come back, and continue to give back to this country, who have elevated, become entrepreneurs, professionals all around, and continue to give back to this community. I think it is very, very commendable. This is definitely your year, President Alphonse, and you will see as the year goes by what I'm talking about. But most definitely, I believe St. Martin is blessed. We all have a role to play, and groups and clubs such as these, as someone said, silently, not so silent anymore, shows instead of the negativity that sometimes goes out from this country, shows a great positive that our own can bring and how we come together to help each other. Now turning to our weather forecast for June the 30th, 2020, an approaching tropical wave will cause cloudy periods and showers across the region during the latter part of this forecast period. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a gentle to moderate wind flow during this forecast period. Seas are expected to peak near six feet during the next few days. So the outlook through Thursday midday, partly cloudy with light haze and a few passing showers possible. Now, let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, son arrested for physically assaulting his mother. We'll have the details of that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pin code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. In more news for you at this time, the police patrols were dispatched to the over the bank area on Monday, June 29th at around 1 a.m. in the morning for what was described to officers as a family dispute. Upon arrival, officers were met by a female who was suffering from several lacerations from the hands of her son. The victim informed the officers on the scene that she and her son with initials L.P., 18 years of age, got into an argument which quickly escalated into a physical altercation between the two. The police noted that the mother had a swollen jaw and a big cut on her left ear and needed medical attention. She was treated on the scene by paramedics. The mother filed an official complaint with the officers in front of her son who was still at the location. He was immediately arrested for ill treatment. He was then transported to the police station in Phillipsburg without incident, where he is currently being held pending further investigation. And still to come, Simpson Bay Bridge will resume regular scheduled bridge opening times as of Wednesday, July the 1st. We'll have the details of that story when SXM Daily News returns.
Hello, St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina, and I play football with the Walichi Women's Soccer Team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy, and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in? And as we end this edition of SXM News for this evening, the John Sainsboro Leisure Bridge, better known as the Simpson Bay Bridge, will resume regular scheduled bridge opening times as of Wednesday, July the 1st, for the Simpson Bay Bridge, as well as the Causeway Bridge. The regular scheduled bridge opening times for the Simpson Bay Bridge are 8.30 a.m. outbound, 9.30 a.m. inbound, 10.30 a.m. outbound, 11.30 a.m. inbound, 3 p.m. inbound, 4 p.m. outbound, and then 5 p.m. inbound. For the Causeway Bridge, it will be 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 3.30 p.m. Back on March 27, 2020, the Simpson Bay Lagoon Authority reduced bridge openings due to the national COVID-19 lockdown and reduced boat traffic due to the normalization of economic activity. The Lagoon Authority decided to revert back to the regular schedule. And with that, viewers, brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you for joining me. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to sinmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.